Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, the Old Willie's Jeep is getting a brand new bed. Now this might be a little different than what you're expecting, but I think it's gonna be pretty dang cool. So stick around. Back in the day when I first got this thing and I was fixing all the rust in it and putting new floorboards in and stuff, I was trying to figure out a solution for this bed. Now the original bed was too far gone to save. I tried to, but there was just very little left and what was left was really rusty and thin. I'd never seen this in a Jeep before and I didn't know how it was gonna look or how it was gonna work, but I think it turned out really cool. It looks really good, but I did this kind of quick and dirty back in the day. This is actually just an old pallet. I tore it down and put it in here. This is roughly where the original bed cross members would have been at. And then I've just got some quarter inch carriage bolts holding all this in. And as much as I like this, there's some things about this that I don't like. So first off, and really the main reason I'm changing this, so even this is some kind of hardwood, it's really brittle, it's really dry, and it's already cracked a bunch. You can see like down here, or like this one right here, it's not gonna be long, and there's gonna be some big chunks missing out of this, and it's not gonna look good. There's also some pretty big spaces between these boards, and there's nothing in between there to keep dust or water or mud or anything from splashing up out from under the Jeep and onto the bed. And then finally, I've really just got all this just kind of tacked in here. I never finished it because I guess in the back of my mind, I always thought I was gonna go back and do it a little better. And that's what I'm gonna be doing today. The same ideal, just executed a little better. Real quick before I start tearing into this thing, I do wanna explain myself. I wanna tell y'all why I'm doing a wooden bed. Now there's three or four ways I can think of that are pretty easy to fix this. I could just get a piece of sheet metal or a piece of diamond plate, weld it in and I'd be done with it. I could cut the bed out of a truck, make that fit, but honestly, I cannot think of a good way to execute that where it wouldn't just look like something kind of cobbled together. And finally, I could open up my wallet and buy a brand new bed floor, but I just don't want to spend that kind of money. I think I can make something even cooler than that. Y'all that have been watching the channel for a while, you know this thing's had one or two previous owners, probably a lot more than that. They've all left their mark on it. They've all made questionable decisions. But now that it's in my possession, I wanna to add to that character, not take away from it. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let me show y'all what I got. What I got here, this is some old, old barn wood. And you can still see some of these have like a little gray left in them. I've already processed a bunch of this, got it planed down, it's all the same thickness. There was an old tobacco barn on my parents' farm and it was falling down. It was getting kind of dangerous. So when we took it down, I sat back some of this wood because I thought one day I might want to do something with it. This is some good dry hardwood. It should last a really long time. It'll for sure be a lot better than the pallet wood I've got. Now I need to go ahead, and get some of this angle out of the way, undo them carriage bolts, get all that old wood out, and then we'll see what we're working with. So I got all them boards out. I went ahead and got rid of the rest of the frame too. All them boards are right there. I still gotta get them carriage bolts out. There's that other piece of the frame. Now, I shouldn't be surprised, and y'all probably ain't surprised. I think I've opened up a can of worms. I've got some major surgery to do here. Now, when I first started working on this Jeep, I was using a lot of recycled materials. I was on the cheap. I really didn't even know where I was going with this thing at the time. But all excuses aside, this needs to be fixed the right way. I can do a lot better than this. So what's the next step? Well, I'm gonna have to sit back and ponder on this one. I was kind of thinking about maybe raising the bed up. that eliminate a bunch of this rust right here, make it even with this, but then the boards would be up above that. And also that would kind of mess up where the tailgate is. We'd have stuff sticking up above the tailgate. I'm really kind of thinking, I just need to cut all this out, put an X brace in there or something 
and then just rebuild this from scratch. I know that's gonna be a bunch of work, a lot more work than I was expecting, but like I said, I wanna do this the right way. All right, so I think I've got a plan to go forward. I found some of this angle out in the scrap pile. I think that can recreate the edges right here. I'm also gonna to have to hunt down two pieces of angle to recreate the front and the back. So that way I'll have a lip all the way around the edges. I've also gotta come up with something to replace these cross members. First things first though, I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut this whole bed out. I might leave the rear end just for now, but it might also end up getting rebuilt. All right, so I got that whole old bed cut out there. I got all these edges cleaned up. I got a bunch of rust cut out. So I got kind of a nice fresh canvas to build off of now. Of course, there's a couple of things that I've noticed that are also gonna have to be addressed. One is this rear cross member. So for one thing, it's like three or four layers of metal. It's really rusty. It's almost broke away right here. There's barely anything holding it to the tub. On this side where the tailgate hinge is, it's really rusted out. So then I'm gonna have to cut that whole piece out and rebuild something there. I went ahead and threw this brace in when I started cutting the bed out because I need something to keep some structure back here. I've literally cut out like all the structure. And now I think I got a pretty good plan to build this back a lot stronger than how I had it. So that's the next step. I gotta put some structure back in this tub. I think I've got a pretty good idea of how I'm gonna do that. So let me show y'all what that is. So, like I said, I've got this angle here. I'm gonna cut it to length and I'll drop it down and that'll be my bed sides. That'll put some good structure in this right here. Front and back, I'm also gonna do angle. The front, I'll do a similar piece of angle to probably this right here. So then I'll have a lip going all the way around. And then for this cross member, I think I'm just gonna do one big piece of angle. I'll cut one side to whatever this width is right here. I can put a little shelf there and that's where the wood can stick in at. And then over there, the wood can lay down and then I'll fix it in there somehow. That's the plan, so let's get cutting. All right, so I've got a piece of angle kind of tacked in on the front part of the bed up there. That's roughly where it's gonna be at. It might come up a little bit more. This rear cross member I took out, I've got this piece of angle to replace it. It's 3 16 And kind of cool, this come off of a CJ5 I fixed up one time. 
this was like, I want to say maybe the rear cross member actually, somebody put on there and I had back there in the scrap pile, it just happened to fit just right. So it's going to end up going right up in here somewhere. But I wanted to show y'all how rough this tub is, like what I'm working with and what I'm having to figure out how to like brace up and weld to. So let me show y'all that. So when I cut out the rear cross member, somebody had like overlapped it on both sides. And that's how they grafted, I guess, the new skin in or anyways, it's hard to tell. There's so many layers at this point, but when I cut a piece of this corner away, which come to find out this whole corner piece that wraps around here, that's pretty important to the integrity of this whole back corner here. You can see it's welded all the way up through here. I guess it's screwed on on this side. That's a pretty thick piece of metal. And then when I cut this little chunk away, cause I think the cross member needs to come up just a hair. There's just a random piece of metal floating in there. This looks like an old cut, maybe when they skin this on. And see, this is all just thin, rusted out, pitted up. You can see the layers here. This was a big strip of Bondo, and I had to chip it out because I gotta have some metal to weld to here. Just kinda gives y'all an idea of like how rough this tub is and what I'm trying to make work here. All right, now that y'all got an idea what's going on, let's go ahead and stick this cross member in. Now, the way this is all set up on these sawhorses and everything, nothing's level. I just threw it up there where I could actually work on it. So, as I've been going along, I've been taking my angle finder and I'll just throw it on what should be kind of close to a good surface to go off of. Like right here, I can find an angle there. This stretches out across the bed. So, this is probably a decent place to look. And that's saying 0.7. Stick it down here on this cross member and 0.7, which is crazy because when I did these cutouts and everything, and just now when I clamped it up, I did no adjustment. That's where I eyeballed it at. Some days you just get luckier than others, I guess. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a few little tacks on here. I might grab that tailgate and throw it up here real quick. Make sure nothing's changed in the width right here, but this is looking really good. I went ahead and threw a board in here and got clamped on both ends. Now you can kind of see what the ideal here is. So this will be a top plate. This will be non-removable. I'm gonna weld a lip on under there to catch the bottom of this board. So the boards will stick in right here. Then they'll fall down right there. And then I'm gonna have a cap that goes here and probably a cap on both edges. So the only thing I'm concerned about now is I kind of want the top of that board or the cap that goes on top of these boards to be even with probably that bar right there. So where it's at now, it looks like I might need to come up maybe a quarter of an inch, maybe a little less. I'll trim that piece of angle to match. And then of course I'll probably have to trim these pieces of angle to match. Once I'm happy with where that's at, I'm already happy with this. I go ahead and weld these two in. Then I can go ahead and throw my side pieces on. Those should go pretty quick. I've still got to come up with two floor braces. I've got to replace those. Then I think we'll have this bed really boxed in good. Once we do all that, I think I'm gonna be ready to start laying boards in. and trimmed in this piece of angle. Now there was a couple ways to do this. The way I did it and then the right way. The right way would have been to take this off, cut all these tacks, make my measurement, cut with the plasma table over on the bench, bring it back, weld it in. And that seemed like a lot of work. So I kind of just haphazardly went down through here with the plasma cutter, cut it pretty close. I'm gonna finish it off with the grinder. I think it'll look really good. I did a little test section just to see. I think it looks fine. I'm going to go ahead, grind all this in, finish weld it, and we'll have this piece in. So 
got that all welded up. I might still go ahead and just grind all this down smooth. Welds went pretty good though. Everything seems nice and solid. I probably am gonna have to go up underneath that piece of angle at some point. Put a few welds down there. I'm probably not gonna fully weld it like I did the top. Just something to give it some strength on the bottom. And I'm also worried about it, you know, peeling up over time. This is coming right along though, so I'm ready to do my edges. I'm gonna go cut those to length, get them ready to go in, and we'll see what we got there. Cutting this piece of angle here for the bed sides. So I marked it on the inside, which was kind of stupid of me. But then I got to thinking, if there was a way I could set an offset up on this, I'd cut that line a lot easier because this has a built-in guide for the plasma cutter. This is what I come up with. I just bent one of them guides over a little bit. That rides right up next to that edge right there, right on my line. And you can see, that's about as straight as you're going to get it. that piece of angle I just trimmed up that just took a little bit off of here so I got a little sample piece of the boards I'm using this is the same thickness I just cut a little end off so that fits up in there pretty good I might tap that up just a little bit more make sure I got a good gap there I don't want too much wiggle room you can see right here that's all the bad stuff I cut out right there so this will be a good place for me to weld to I can weld this whole bottom seam here and I can weld on top too this is, I'd say about eighth inch or so. That's gonna be my cap that goes right there. So we'll have the board and then we'll put a cap like that right there that goes all the way down both edges, something like that right there. We'll have this lip here trapping it. I'm also gonna put a piece up inside here. That'll be another shelf for the bottom of that wood to land on. And that end will get a cap too. I'm thinking it'll probably be like a bolt on instead of welding it to everything. That way, if I ever want to take this back off, if I need to replace a board or something, I can unbolt that front piece. I can pull out all the middle boards if I have to to get to the edge board or something. But I think that'll be a lot easier way to maintenance this if I ever have to. So I think I'm pretty happy with how this is all laid out right now. I think I'm gonna go inside this wheel well. I'm gonna cut that edge where it's nice and straight with that piece of angle. That way it just looks a little better. And then I'm probably not gonna weld it in right now. I'm just gonna tack it in because I want to do the other side, copy what I did over here, maybe even throw in some floor braces, and then I'm gonna make sure everything's working and fitting right, and then I'll weld all this in. Like I said, I took what I did on the driver's side and I copied it over here on the passenger side. So all this is tacked in. I'm ready to weld it in just as soon as I confirm that all the boards are gonna lay in here good, that I can cap it right. Just need to do one more check before I go through the trouble welding everything. And you can see I've got a cut here and then it kind of tapers down. So I know a bunch of this right here is not very good metal anyways. So I'm probably gonna follow that line. I'll trace it all the way down, cut all that off. Then I'll weld that piece of angle in behind here too. While we're down here, I'll show you what I do with my floor braces. So that's just a piece of rectangular tubing. I split it in half with the plasma cutter and that's gonna be like my bed supports. It's like eighth inch wall. I could have went a little thicker maybe. I think it's got plenty of structure already in it. You know, I wanted something with a bend to it because a piece of flat bar just would not have been strong enough. And once I bolt all them boards to it, it's really gonna be strong, I think. I don't plan on running a rear seat in this, but I do wanna be able to haul stuff or stand up in it. It needs to be strong. And who knows, one day I might throw a rear seat in it. Now that I got all this mocked up, I'm gonna throw the boards in there and make sure everything fits and looks good.
Say what you want, I think this looks awesome. Everything fits really good. I like the way it's all coming together. So now I'm gonna pop all these boards back out, finish weld everything, then we'll see about securing these boards down. Kind of jumped ahead y'all and went ahead and knocked some of this stuff out real quick i got all these pieces cut i've got the piece up under here clamped right here there wasn't nothing really to show there it's just cutting these the length and tacking them in real quick i'm trying to make sure everything's really nice and tight right now that's why i got this clamp here holding that up pressing this wood up against this piece then i'm going to put a couple screws here and then maybe work my way out from the middle and that way when I get to the ends, everything will be nice and tight. I also made a trip to the hardware store. I've got some new carriage bolts. And then for the bolts back here, and probably for the front too, I got some of these button heads. These are 3 8 16 inch and a half long. They're going to sit nice and low right here. Shouldn't get in the way of anything. So I'm going to go get some stuff, and we'll go ahead and punch a couple holes in this. This works out really good because when I do the oversized drill bit for the clearance for the screw, you can see down in there, it actually chamfers the hole that it's going into. So when I go to put my tap in there, it'll be a nice easy way to tap it and the screw should start really easy. All right, one down and like 15 more to go. I probably could explain this a little bit better what I'm doing here. So I've got my square set up here. So all my holes land right in the middle of this so they all line up good. I'll stick my square up there. Then I'm just using my little center punch here to scribe me a little line. Once I have that line there, I'm just eyeballing wherever the middle of that board's at, somewhere up in there. Then I make my mark right on that line. Always use a pilot drill. That way your mark stays where it's supposed to be at. You end up with a better hole. Drill the pilot. This here is the drill size for a 3816 tap.
This is a 27 64th. And I drilled through this piece of angle, through the board, and just barely chamfered the hole on that piece of quarter inch bar stock on the back. Here's my tap, 3816 with just a little bit of WD-40 on it. And finally, we send her home with one of these button head screws. I went ahead and knocked out the front, did it just like I did the back. I was a little bit worried about the boards not being the same width because the you can see the bolt spacing ain't the same on all of them. I think it looks fine. It doesn't really bother me. Usually stuff like that drives me crazy. I think it's worth it though because I think it's cool having all these boards kind of different widths. Now they got my end caps knocked out. I'm going to go ahead and do a few welds down through here. I'm not gonna fully weld them because I may need to take them back out one day. Do a few welds down through there. I'm gonna go ahead and weld the ends too. It won't be that big a deal if I ever need to take that cap off to cut them welds. I think it'll be a little bit stronger that way. And once I get all that stuff done, then we can go ahead and put these carriage bolts in. Well, change of plans. You can see I've run out of welding gas. That only seems to happen on the weekends when you actually need it. So now instead of welding up the ends, which I did get those two ends. I think I'm gonna change lanes. I'll go ahead and do the carriage bolts. And then tomorrow, Monday, when I get the gas, I can go ahead and finish welding up these sides. Y'all can see here, I've got all this marked out. Right here's where all my braces are at. And then of course I went as close to where this was, but should pretty much be center. I want all these bolt heads to line up as good as they can. I've got a 17 64th drill bit. I did a little test over here on one of these boards. It looked like it was the perfect size. So I'm gonna go through here. I'll probably do a pilot bit at each of my marks because I am going through that metal brace. Then I'll come back with the 17 64th. Then I'm gonna pop all them carriage bolts in, tighten them up from the bottom, and we'll have this thing licked. I think that's about gonna wrap this project up. I'm really glad I took the time to strip all this back down, start from ground zero. I built a bunch of structure back into the Jeep. This is way more solid than it was before. Also, I think I've added a ton of character to this Jeep. This wooden bed really matches the theme I've got going with this Jeep. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna stain it, but I for sure need to seal it with something. Let me know down in the comments what you would recommend. That'd be good to seal this with. I also need something like silicone or something. Any little nail holes or any little cracks or something, I want to go ahead and seal those up too. Now there's a handful of things we'll have to do later. Like once I get some more welding gas, finish up these sides, there's nothing really y'all are going to miss there. Like I said, I got to seal all this wood with something. I don't know if I'm going to paint any of this metal. I might just let it rust and then knock the rust off and clear coat it. Let me know what y'all think about that down in the comments. Also, I got to put the tailgate back on. I got to bolt them hinges back on. Now I've noticed that tailgate is pretty rusty down there at the bottom where it hinges. It's a really common problem with these and they do make a repair panel to fix all that. Been thinking about buying one and making a video on it. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know. Also, if there's a process or repair or a fix or something about these Jeeps you've been wanting to see, 
let me know down in the comments and I'll see if I can put together a video for you. I really appreciate y'all checking out this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see y'all next time.